Good afternoon, everyone. We are celebrating 25th episode of this unique journey called Candidate Ciceroni Live. We started with an idea to encourage the dialogues within fashion and lifestyle fraternity, get more people talking, learn from the fraternity, inspire more people, and learn about the challenges of people who are already established and enable other people to learn from it. This was all possible due to this one dynamic, visionary and stylish entrepreneur, Neha Shet, founder and CEO of Ciceroni. Welcome Neha to the show. Thank you. We are so excited that the 25th episode has to be with you. I have seen 24 episodes and finally my turn is <laughs> Thank you for having me on the show. So before we begin the entire Q&A, let me brief everyone about Neha Shade. She's the one who's always been in the background. So many of you may not even know about her. So this is our chance to introduce our CEO and founder to all of you. Graduated with Masters in Electrical Engineering from Stanford University, Neha has worked for over one decade in Silicon Valley in startups and large companies like BMC Software and McAfee. She founded Musicar in 2005. It's a software firm that provides premier offshore software services in software development, QA, and managed IT services for high-tech companies in North America. And she finally founded Ciceroni in 2016, and we are like so thrilled about it. So let's begin the Q&A around that. Sure. What led you to start Ciceroni, Neha? All right. So while you, I would be working. Uh, um, there would be times when I would get some text messages on some exhibitions and they did appear interesting. There were times when I would see some hoardings, some newspaper ads, some friends talking about an exhibition or receiving a personal invite at home. And you know, you wonder that there's absolutely no way you can go to all the exhibitions. Correct. Or there could be friends talking about a new store and you would wonder, okay, does it make sense to go to that store? You know, is it going to be my taste or not? So I would always have these questions. And then I started thinking that, you know, when I go watch a movie, I check reviews. When I book a hotel, um, I check reviews. So true. And, um, you know, when I go to a restaurant, I'll still check reviews. So why not have a place where people can check reviews? and then decide where to go shopping or what's the right place for them to go and shop. And I was wondering, you know, this should be something that will be extremely valuable to shoppers and that's how the idea was born. So it's basically an online review portal for um, shopping in fashion and lifestyle. Wonderful. So when you started, was there anything like this that was already existent? Um, not really. I would once in a while see some advertisements online, but nothing, you know, of editorial type. You know, there wasn't one place where there's everything, you know, everything structured and organized. You know, today, what are the exhibitions? You would have to check at 10 different places. Where do you want to go and shop? You'd have to call a friend. You may see an advertisement online, but it wasn't a thorough list. So sure. there was nothing like that. Sure. So how did you categorize things into Ciceroni? You know, the current website that we have or the, the app that we have. What are the different sections and how do they help people? Sure. So we have the exhibitions which are basically um, date and time driven. So we talk about or we list every exhibition that's happening per city in the cities that we operate in. So we have all the exhibitions, you know, categorized by the day, the time, the venue. Um, we review these exhibitions. So there are reviews written, which give valuable information as um, what kind of um, products are they carrying, uh, what is the price range, um, you know, what kind of products. Sure. Um, and, you know, so all of that, which will enable a shopper to decide whether they should go to that particular exhibition or not, so that's exhibitions. You have stores, stores are again listed by category. Sure, there yeah. are thousands and thousands of stores, especially in Ahmedabad where we are, and these are categorized again by your know, traditional and western wear and bridal wear and 
kids wear sure. and everything that you can think. It allows people to kind of browse through their categories. Correct, correct. And they also list the deals, you know, where are the discounts happening in the city. So these are the three ways where we, you know, that's how we've organized um, all the information uh, for the shoppers. And then we also give a lot of useful tips to our shoppers. Um, we talk about trends. We talk, you know, for example, uh, Navratri, you know, where do you go shop for Navratri <laughs> or um, where do NRIs, uh, where should they go shop for, um, you know, their bridal wear. Absolutely. So we, we also, you know, have a lot of um, very interesting and relevant articles on our board. Lovely. So uh, when you talk about the article and the reviews that you spoke about, two things that come to my mind is um, the reviews, you know, the fashion reviews that Ciceroni started giving, you know, um, how important are these reviews, especially in non-metro cities like in Delhi, Mumbai, Kolkata, Bangalore, you have a lot of uh, blogger scenario which is there, mm -hmm. number one, and you have a lot of magazines also which mm -hmm. talk about these things. Mm -hmm. How does it help in a non-metro city? Sure. So I think we, we all, you know, read these fashion magazines. We all love to see what's out there, you know, and generally these magazines will cover the established designers. Or, oh, yes, absolutely. You know, the big shops and, and especially those which are in the metros. However, I feel Ciceroni is giving um, so much of valuable information and joy to shoppers by having them discover very um, upcoming talent, new talent, who probably are, you know, established or will be in that Will be the big ones. <laughs> but it definitely gives joy to shoppers of get, picking up something really new and sure. unique and not something that you've seen several times. In Everybody is wearing a particular it. Style. Yeah. So it, you know, it is extremely important to cover um, information in non-metro cities. Reviews are definitely helpful. Um, it helps shoppers in, in you know, deciding who they like, who should they follow, and um, they get to see the new trends coming up. So I feel it's very relevant for the non-metros more than the big cities because they're already taken care of. So um, I remember when we discussed this in 2016, we also brought in this whole idea about talking about customer service, you know, mm -hmm. which we do at Ciceroni, you know. So would you want to elaborate on that? Why did we kind of add up the customer service part also? I, I think, see, shopping, it's one, it's about buying a piece of uh, clothing or jewelry or a piece of furniture. So that's that, but also um, the whole experience of shopping. I think that's very important and you know, you want to give that information so that um, it helps you know, people first of all deciding whether they should go there or not because it definitely makes their experience a lot of fun. At the same time I feel it also gives a different perspective to the shop owners and designers that, That's know, a feedback that system. this is you know, very important. Sure. So sure. it is, I think that it it is 50% the product, 50% is customer service which will make somebody go back, you know, again and again. Absolutely. So that even sizing, you know, yeah. people, sometimes you like things but it's just not made for you. So we also provide information on sizing. Sizing part as yeah. well, right, right. So um, moving on, hyperlocal content, you know, mm -hmm. that's what we are doing right now. We are creating a lot of hyperlocal content and um, the the gurus in uh, the digital world say hyperlocal content is the future. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> what's your comment on this? Okay, so I, I understand that it's, it's a buzzword right yeah. now. Yeah. Um, but if I think about it, it makes perfect sense. Yeah. Um, you know, being in Ahmedabad, I'm talking about Ahmedabad because that's where we are right now. Um, Ahmedabad, we want to know what, you know, works in the city. Sure. Uh, we want to know, you know, what is out there in Ahmedabad. I think at the same time, even for the designers and the store owners, for them also, it is very important and interesting to know what works in their area absolutely so and also you know having content that is very relevant to them you know their um, you know the, the 
kind of uh, culture we have in the city, the weather, the, the festivals and the occasions that we have, especially in India, it varies a lot Absolutely. from city to city. And I think that is why relating to something is very important. And I think that's why, you know, uh, it, it does make sense um, to have very hyper-local content as opposed to <coughs> something generic which again, since years, is already being taken care of. So uh, I really like the way you mentioned relatability, you know, because that's what everybody is looking now. You know, they want this their own character, their own individuality to show vis a vis um, the cookie cutter uh, designs that are available from the high street labels. You know, <coughs> I'm sorry. As an individual evolves, the style evolves. I think that is taking uh, a lot of precedence, and probably that's why whether it is in food, whether it is in fashion, hyper local is coming. So you go back to your regional cuisines true. also. True, 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 absolutely. Great, great. So um, <coughs> digital presence is important for retail brands. Yes. And so what do you think? Has the need penetrated the Gujarat market finally? We started back in 2016. It, it has and we have seen a huge uh, difference here in a span of three years. When we started, um, I don't think um, retailers and uh, designers or you know exhibition or, um, organizers felt it was mandatory you know some you know some people did it some people did not um, and the conversation um, to these potential customers of ours was explaining them why digital presence was would be a good thing sure whereas now i feel you know it's just there everywhere everybody needs to be on everybody everybody is understood that they have to be there. When you hear about a brand as a user, the first thing you will do is you will check them out online to see you know, what kind of products do they have. And now even our conversations um, to our potential customers is more about how do we create content for them which will stand out. Sure, sure. So now they all feel that you know, um, informing about an event that it's is not, not making sense, but that's just... But, you know, in this clutter or this crowd, how do we stand out? And Absolutely. so our conversations have changed where, you know, we have to come up with ideas on how do we make um, their story interesting. Absolutely. So it has penetrated in Gujarat. I feel pretty much everybody is is now understands that yeah. digital presence is, is needed. Also, the other phenomenon that has changed is that everybody has an internet connection. Everybody has a smartphone. That's true. That's true. So, the moment they hear about a brand, they immediately want to, you know, see, you know, what are they about on their phone. And that also has changed, you know, uh, or that's probably one of the reasons why digital presence is absolutely mandatory. So I think for retailers it's important where the consumers are and the consumers okay. are reading and getting the content from digital platform. Yeah. yeah. So might as well be there yeah. rather than miss the boat. Yeah, I think more than, you know, hard copies, you know, newspapers, I think it's more of checking on their phones. Probably our generation is still reading newspapers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, but the current one is probably just watching um, everything on Insta and Facebook and <laughs> online. I don't think so. They've seen the newspapers, but well, so for them, uh, if the brand has to reach out, the digital yes. presence definitely makes sense. So it's been a wonderful journey from 2016 to 2019 and um, Ahmedabad, Baroda, Surat, three big cities, you know, and um, the innumerable exhibition have been listed. I, I recall but Ahmedabad having in totality of three years more than 2,500 exhibitions that we've already True. listed. True. And uh, so is it's happening in Baroda and Surat. So what are your key observation learning that you saw in this three market? How are they so different from each other? So I think so Ahmedabad is, has probably the biggest market. Um, the number of galleries and the number of stores in Ahmedabad, I think, uh, comparing with the other two cities 
it has the maximum number of true, calories. True. Um, I think more than a dozen calories or absolutely. Even more. Yeah, yeah. In the offing. <laughs> and and you know, if if you know, even the the audience if they um, look at Cicerone and look at the pictures of the reviews that are done, you feel in Ahmedabad lot of things work. Yeah. It's not one particular style. So even the clothing that falls in the sustainability um, segment that works and then something very ornate and lot of work that works and then something very eclectic or quirky and modern that works. So there's a market for everything in Ahmedabad. Everything works as long as I feel the products, the clothing or the jewellery, it's nice and the price range is right. So, so let me interrupt you here. You shifted back to Ahmedabad in 2005, mm -hmm. around that time. Yes, so From there till now, what has changed? People spend more on clothing. So the value sure. for money thing is losing yes, this. Yes, people spend more and including me, you know, <laughs> I was used to buying um, things in US and, and you know it uh, initially I felt that things were expensive but now the price has increased but um, I think you're used to it and I see everybody you know spending, spending dressing and these multi uh, stall exhibitions and there are just thousands of shoppers there so um, there's a change Right. So going back to your question, the Baroda uh, and the yeah, Surat. So in Ahmedabad, uh, it has a market for everything. Everything, okay. Um, Baroda, um, again, if you take a look at the pictures, um, it's um, the the market is small. There are a couple of galleries. Um, the the type of clothing is is elegant, um, traditional, and um, you know now I think when looking at the pictures, I can sometimes tell that this is from uh, Ciceroni Baroda <laughs> and uh, not Ahmedabad. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. So it, it's it's a little traditional um, and elegant. Yeah, um, yeah. So so that's there. Um, the number of galleries are Very much less. less than Ahmedabad. Surat, um, there it, it's it's the the number of galleries are more. The yeah. number of stores are more than Baroda, but not as much as Ahmedabad. And, and you feel that, um, you know, the, the clothing especially is, is ornate, lot of work and then lot of complex patterns. Yeah. You know? So yeah. you will on one um, piece of clothing, you'll have frills and then you will have... All the work, trends will be there in it. And then, you know, there will be an uneven cut and everything has to be there Absolutely. in, in Surat. So, a plain kurta won't work. A plain yeah. silk kurta won't work yeah. in and Surat. And I'm sure that you know, this is what we're talking about is for most of the people and then in each city there's, of a, course there's a pocket, pocket. that uh, probably likes something very different than what the, sure. you know, most people like. So. Sure, sure, sure. I think that would be a brilliant insight for a lot of exhibitors and a lot of designers who would want to get into the cities and know whether that, that, that that is the right market for them or not, true, you know. True. Yeah. So, um, visual communication and brand strategy in fashion and lifestyle. You know, we all appreciate the campaigns run by Sabya Sachi, Raw Mango, and um, we all are like stuck to internet, right? Like he releases hundred images, and we are stuck to it. Like, oh my God, it's so pretty. Mm -hmm. But do you think that is translating here in Gujarat? Are the brands willing to go out and showcase this thing in a visually pleasing manner? So I, I think. I think that it, it actually is, um, you know, it is a lot of fun and to see these um, beautiful uh, visual stories that uh, these designers create. It is really nice and lovely to see how they dress up the models and what kind of variations they do and it definitely gives ideas to a lot of people who are, you know, watching these, um, these uh, pictures, images or videos. So they've done a beautiful job. I think it's getting there. It's not absolutely there. Digital presence is there, right? But um, you know, having um, these beautiful uh, stories or a strategy or a message, um, it's there. It, it, it's happening, but um, not as prevalent. And I I think that it would be extremely beneficial. 
um, if you know this trend kind of um, gets in. gets yeah because it it gives lot of ideas you know you see a piece of uh, clothing or jewelry just a picture as is versus the designer who has designed it you know how they visualized it and how they would want somebody to wear, wear it, it or showing and give a story yeah, yeah the background story also yeah. probably about the work and lot yeah. of other things yeah. that could kind yeah. of come in the messaging so i think that will be very interesting to um, i i think that could influence the shopping trend absolutely itself. absolutely a, a lot so taking an analogy from food you know i mean we spoke about it like you know food visuals are so important yeah. you need to get like really lured to eating that thing then you might go mm-hmm. i think same follows for even fashion you know i mean yeah fashion um, even um, you know cosmetics or a piece of furniture just seeing a picture you know on its own or a sofa you know uh, arranged in a very nice cozy room it will just Yeah, correct so it can make or break the sale actually yes, right yes, yes, yeah yes. so it's really important for people to invest into something like this yeah. great so we come to your personal style uh, closer to the ending the episode minimalism or maximalism what's your style none, <laughs> none. i i don't think it's it's there but you know it, it's not uh weighed towards one uh, style or the other i think it's a mix of both right and it really depends on how i feel that particular day or what the occasion is it could sometimes fall in the minimalist and category or the other one like i like uh clothing that um, shows the shape of the body and doesn't hide uh the shape of the body or it enhances how you look so i definitely like nice cuts but at the same time i also like very bold colors right or i like to experiment absolutely you know, that's your thing something works sometimes it doesn't work so so i think it's a mix of both i would i try to be experimental i try to do so we totally new. love it <laughs> and then it also depends on how you feel like sometimes you really you know, want to dress up in one way and sometimes you just not into it so brilliant brilliant so who are your favorite designers that we've spotted on ciceroni you know 3 years we've kind of spotted so many new designers sure anything that you have your eyes on so i think it it changes <laughs> it changes over 3 years you know there have been favorites and then you've just Got done so with it from them and then you come across somebody else on our platform i i you know have bought so much from atrangi which is based yeah, in yeah 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 and then i probably have lot of their styles and then sure um i can talk about recently you know one of the exhibitions i went to um, tama jewelry i you know it was new to me so i you know ended up getting a lot of things from them and then more more tantra more tantra yeah so the jewelry i came across them for the first time on our platform and i bought from them um another one um, queen you know made this these pants are from them but i you know that's one of my recent finds <laughs> on our platform so um, so i think favorite designers keeps on changing keeps on changing i i think gujarat definitely has lot of jewelry and lot of new uh, brands coming in you know yeah very interesting things coming up so what next for sisaroni um we continue what we doing uh we continue to be the best um our uh, the only go to platform for checking out everything that has to do with shopping in fashion and lifestyle that's what we are um we are the best at that we continue keeping that doing uh, that good work spot. and then we go to other cities so the dream is to be in you know all cities in india and uh, be as thorough as organized um as you know super honest about the reviews we do absolutely and uh, we be the best at that but be present in all cities in india i'm that's, into that that's next for sisaroni 
fantastic fantastic so thank you so much for uh, talking to us and our viewers neha i am sure everybody now knows the face behind this um, wonderful startup that is making rounds three years three cities and we are going to go expand across india that's our dream and our vision and okay. thank you for finally letting me be here <laughs> <laughs> we After wanted the years. we wanted the opportune time for it. After three years, and thank you to all the you know loyal customers of Ciceroni uh, for um, using our platform to decide where to go shop. Thank you so much, viewers. If you like the show, please like, share, comment, and subscribe. You will also find this episode on Spotify soon. We will be back again next week with another guest Wednesday. See you. Thank you.